Find a kiss. George? Hi guys, my name is Marlene McCohen and I want to welcome you to Parent Tip Tuesday. Today I have two little co-stars to help me with my video. I've got my little Picasso, my mustache parakeet, and of course Cody the African Grey is here to help today. But he's been making so much noise in all the attempts to make this video so far that I had to give him an almond. So for those of you waiting for my videos on Tuesday, sometimes it's these little feathered friends themselves that spend all the time delaying my video. But of course we wouldn't have it any other way because you guys know I love them so much and their needs come first. Now, for those of you who don't know yet, I have a Facebook page called Parrot Station and you are all welcome to join. Almost 800 of you have already joined. By the way, I gotta mention this. If you don't have a bird and you just love birds, you're welcome to join. Don't worry about it. A lot of people ask that. But the reason I bring up Parrot Station right now is because it's from Parrot Station that I'm now learning what kind of videos you guys are in need of. Of course, Parrot Station is super exciting for me because I get to know all your birds. Today, I was looking through the feed and I was pretty excited to see a bird named Frank for Frank Sinatra and Bert for Bert Reynolds. I really, really like those names because, you know, I like those strong male names like Frank, George, Bert. They're so interesting. It's like, hi, come over. I'd love to introduce you to my flock. Well, this is George and this is Bert and this is uh, Hank. Those names are so great for birds. Aside from naming birds and getting to know your birds and seeing how beautiful your birds are, Parrot Station is so helpful for you as a community to help one another and for me to get a great idea of not only who you guys are, but what it is that you're struggling with. So we put up polls on Parrot Station to see what you would like to see on Parent Tip Tuesday. And I've gotten so many ideas from you guys. The great thing with my Instagram and Parrot Station and YouTube is that now I can collectively see what is the biggest topic that people are asking me about this week. Last week we had a lot of people questioning breeding and hormones and this week I've gotten so many questions on what do I do when I first bring my bird home? I have the bird, I don't know what to do. I want to tame him, but he's biting me. When should I take him out of the cage? How long should I wait before I get him out of the cage? So today I have these two lovely birds to help me out with a demo. So I kind of have a feeling this video is going to be late, but I'm trying my best to give you guys all the information that I possibly can. Now, before I go on with this video, I think it's only fair, and most of you know this, I mean, for those of you who are my regular subscribers, and if you're not, please subscribe. I love it so much. You guys know that my birds are tamed, but you also know that you got to see some of them being tamed. I have some videos up of Rocky in the process of getting tamed, and I still have to finish putting those up because I found so many more. And we also have the Cody files where you can watch Cody and his rescue coming home from day one before I even got in the car to go get him. I didn't know anything about him, but I see a lot of people um, showing you how to tame a bird that's already tame. So I just want to let you know that these birds are tame, but I'm going to go through the motions with you as if they are not. Sometimes Picasso can get really territorial and grumpy when he's inside the cage. So hopefully he will have some good acting skills today, right Picasso? So I need you that when I put you in there, you're going to act like it's really hard for me to get you out. Okay. That's your job today. Okay. Here we go guys. So now we have Picasso in the cage. You want to test your bird's temperament. That's the first thing I always do. How do you do that? You gauge how scared your bird is of your hand. So for example, if I put my hand here, Picasso doesn't really care. You guys can see he's not flying away. He is fine touching my hand. That's a huge teller of how tame the bird is. If your bird is freaking out and flying to a different part of the cage or moving around the back or getting angry, look, look at Picasso right now. He's getting angry, but I know he just doesn't want me in his territory. He wants to sit and chill there. But if your bird has any of that behavior, then it's safe to say your bird has probably never been tame and may be a little more difficult to tame. 
If you are bringing home a baby that has been hand fed, all of this is gonna be so much easier for you. Unless the bird was hand tamed and then ignored for a large period of time, it's safe to say that it's gonna be relatively easy for you to tame your bird because the bird has already been imprinted on by a human that has hand tamed him. So we're talking mostly about a rescue, but all of this can still go for a baby hand fed bird that is coming home. All the same things still apply. It's just that it's gonna be a little bit harder if your bird wasn't hand tamed. So now it's day one and your bird is home. And if it's late at night, what I would do is talk to your bird through the cage, let him know that you mean no harm. They get vibes off of energy, give him really good energy, um, put some treats in his bowl, and maybe not increase his stress by trying to tame him at that moment because it's late at night, let him go to sleep. And then when you wake up, make the attempts to to tame your bird. Now, as you guys saw with Cody, I brought him home in a carrier cage and as I did with Rocky. So I had no choice but to let him out of there and give him a chance to go over to his bigger cage. If your bird is not skittish, like Picasso is not, you may have a chance actually of attempting to hang out with the bird. Open the cage, See how he feels about your hand in the cage. Look at Picasso doing excellent acting here. Picasso, this is excellent acting. See, Picasso is very upset. Now keep in mind, Picasso did what a lot of birds are going to do. I put my hand in there and he goes to bite me. This doesn't hurt at all, by the way, because Picasso doesn't really bite, but most of your birds do, and I know that's what you're scared about. But some birds may also panic and fly all over the cage. And I know that can be so disheartening because it's like, where do I start? They're scared and you don't want to cause them a heart attack either. If you have a skittish bird, the first thing you should do is close the cage. Just take a moment, let the bird get a moment to regroup. He was panicked. You don't want him to have a heart attack. They're extremely sensitive. And just give the bird a little bit of time because you want him to know that he can trust you. When you come back to your bird's cage, it's always a good idea to talk to him through the cage. Let him know that you have good intentions. Have really good energy when you approach your bird. They feel energies. A lot of cockatoos have serious sensitivities. Don't approach them fast. Just approach them very slow and calm because birds really like slow and calm. As I say that, Cody is like flapping all over the place. He wants to go. Those of you who are watch my Instagram story, you see that Cody in the morning is kind of like hanging out in the bathroom. So he just flew to the bathroom door because he knows his toys are in that drawer and he wants to go in there right now. Now remember, while you're talking to your bird through the cage, you can always test and gauge how he feels. Like if there's an updated feeling that he has about you by putting your hand a little bit close to the cage and seeing if he goes for it or if he freaks out by it. So some birds have a tendency to get aggressive and some birds continue to be skittish and that's how you know if you've made some progress or not. Now what I always advise to do, as you guys have heard me, is open the cage. Open this bird's cage. Some birds that you may get have been in a situation where they have not been out of their cages in years. So my personal approach to taming a bird is to always let them know right away that they don't have to be stuck in here. That this place with me is going to be different than wherever they've been before. Now, stay in the area when you open your bird's cage. Don't leave him unattended. Just keep an eye on him. Go watch TV, um, do some housework, whatever you have to do, and wait for him to come out of the cage because eventually he will come out on his own. When your bird comes out of the cage and he's hanging out on top, you don't need to approach him. You can let him know that this is a safe place for him, that outside his cage is just as safe as inside his cage, and you don't have to run up to him right away. You can give him that time to realize that if he hangs out outside his cage, then no one's going to chase him down and no one's going to attack him. Now, guys, 
this is great advice for those of you who have not come so far with your birds. Oh, my bird bites me. My bird doesn't want to come out of the cage. It's very simple to just leave the cage open and let him hang out. Now, this cage is not my favorite example because it's not flat topped. I really like flat topped cages with a stand on top of it where they can play and have extra food dishes and I can put a lot of their toys. Let's talk about the worst case scenario. For those of you that say your bird hates you, your bird wants nothing to do with you, every time you try to take him out of the cage, he bites. Worst case scenario, your bird should be living in a situation where he has a cage with a flat top and lots of toys, and if he doesn't want to talk to you ever, then he can still be out of his cage all day, hanging out and playing with lots of toys. And I guarantee you that won't be the situation that he will be like that forever, especially if you have that approach with him. But it's very important for you to understand that we do not keep birds in cages because we said he didn't want to come out or he bit me or he's not ready. Those are all reasons that you guys are making up if you're not able to tame your bird because it may not be the easiest thing, especially if you have a rescue that is acting aggressive. So let's say we have a cage and the bird is hanging out on top of it. That is your worst case scenario that you should ever have for a bird. That his cage is open as long as you're home and as long as you're available to keep an eye on him, he gets to hang out, he gets to play, and he has toys and lots of things to do. But we're not looking for the worst case scenario. We are looking for our birds to be engaged and not caged. So that's why we're going through this in this video. And by the way, engage not cage doesn't mean that your bird doesn't have a cage. Your bird still wants a nice safe place to feel like it's his own. It's his bedroom, just like a child has a bedroom. And it's also safe too for when you go out and he can't get into things that would hurt him. However, when we are around, and we should be around a lot for our birds, we want our birds to be out. So this is why we're doing this video. Now you guys know my videos, you know Picasso, you know how tame he is, you know how chill he is. But you did just see he got a little bit angry when I put my finger in his cage. He didn't bite me, but he's territorial. A lot of birds are like this. They behave one way when they're in their bedroom, kind of like a teenager, and another way when they're out interacting with you guys. That's why part of the taming process is always, always to get them out of the cage. But how do you get your birds out of the cage? Now guys, I kind of always think of this approach as the pigeons in the park approach. Have you ever been at a park or a duck park and there's a lot of pigeons and there's always that one person that is feeding the birds and all the birds land on his hand? Well, this is exactly the same approach. So basically what you're doing is getting your bird used to you in a non-threatening sort of still position until they get used to you and then they can move farther and farther towards you. Now, once they don't panic anymore when your hand is in the cage, you can put some seeds or a treat in there and then hopefully they will stand on you and eat from your hand, just like the pigeons in the park. And then you keep doing that until you can get farther and farther with the bird. I think that's a great approach for the smaller birds. Now, if you guys watched the rescue of Cody when I brought him home, you'll realize that my approach was a little bit different. I moved a little bit fast with him. I have had birds before, but usually my goal is to let these birds know right away that life with me is going to be different, that if they were locked up for 10 years, they're not gonna be locked up now. So I want to show them a different environment right away. So with Cody, I had his cage open. You can see this in some videos. You see that he tried to bite me. He was a bigger bird. I mean, bigger than, you know, a cockatiel or a conure. So I sat there with a group of different seeds, almonds, things like that, and tried them until I found one that he liked. I approached him by offering him an almond and he took it and I was like, wow, okay, good, this is great. And then um, once he ate that, I left his cage open and I went somewhere where he couldn't see me and I waited for him to go on top of the cage. Now remember, some of your birds may prefer a male or a female, so that is also a thing to test out. Most of the time, whoever takes the time to bond with them is going to be their person. Now once Cody was out of the cage, he behaved 
much like a different bird. George came home, you can see in that video, and he was able to pet Cody. I wasn't able to pet Cody. So I gathered from that that Cody preferred men. However, that wasn't true because till this day, Cody is quite obsessed with me. It's all about who spends time with the bird. Now, since it's very important to get your bird out of the cage, another thing you can try is the stick method. If your bird is terrified of the stick, then do not continue with this approach. But if you can put it in a certain way that they think it's a perch and maybe they'll step up on it. See, Picasso is scared and he's already tame, so I'm not gonna scare him anymore. But if you could put it in the cage in a situation where they can stand on it and they think it's attached but the other side is with your hand, you may be able to pull your bird out that way. A stand may also be very helpful for you to transfer your bird from place to place. Larger birds tend to be a little less scared, but in general, sticks can scare birds. Now let me tell you how I got Cody out of the cage on the second day, because this may happen to you. You get your bird out, somebody has a little bit of leeway with him, he goes to bed at night, when you wake him up in the morning, he's back to being aggressive and territorial out of his cage. Now if you guys remember in the beginning of the video, I spoke about more than one approach to getting your bird out of the cage. The reason I'm spending so much time on this particular step is because it's the most important step. This is the difference between your bird living a life in a cage and you thinking it's okay, and your bird getting to be outside engaged with you and having a good time. So this is a very, very important step. And if those steps that we previously went over don't work for you, or if you are an experienced bird owner or had a bird previously, or let's say you're now dealing with a larger bird than you've dealt with before, here is another thing that you can do. If you guys haven't watched the rescue story of Cody, you should, because a lot of this information will go hand in hand with those videos. If you did watch it, you'll remember that he came out of his cage and was hanging out on top and then I gave him some space. And even though he was out, the thing to know is that the next day, once he was in his cage again, it was like I had to start all over. Once he was inside, he was aggressive again. So what do you do if you have an aggressive bird, a larger bird? I'm gonna show you what I do. Now, before I go on, I should let you know I didn't do this with Rocky. You can watch the rescue video with Rocky. I waited for him to come out. He's quite a large bird. I didn't want to do this for him because I knew he was extra, extra aggressive. Also, um, by some miraculous luck, the day I went to get Cody and I had to move him from the cage he was in to the travel cage, and I was outside and I didn't know if he was flighted because remember Cody was outside. I just picked him up and he stood on me and then I took him to the other cage. As Soon as I got him home, he behaved a little bit differently. It was like just a miracle that he did that right then and there. It was great because he let them know that he wanted to come home with me and then the rest we had to work it out. So what you don't know is the next day after I got Cody out, he went right back to being aggressive in his cage again. I get a soft blanket. I like soft blankets much better than towels. A lot of people use towels. It doesn't really matter. I just always think I want them to be really nice and comfy. And I went in the cage and I grabbed Cody with it. He wasn't in there for more than a few seconds. The great thing about this was it protected my hands so he really couldn't bite and he was in a nice soft situation so he wasn't aggressive. Now let's say that I have Cody right now. I'm not gonna do it to him. Sometimes I do put him in the blanket. He's not scared of it or anything. See, he'll step up there. I'm not gonna wrap Cody up right now, but I had him basically wrapped up in a blanket like this, and I didn't waste too much time keeping him in there. Of course, I wanted him to be free and comfortable, so I put him somewhere like on this bed. Cody probably won't stay on the bed because he knows where his toys are and he wants to go to his toys. Or look at what Cody just exhibited for us, that territorial behavior where he wanted to go back to the cage. Now remember guys, once you have your bird away from his cage, you want to keep him away from his cage. In this example, I have the cage right next to the bed and I'm advising you to let's say take the bird to a bed or some nice big flat surface where you can hang out. But that's assuming that the cage is not in the bedroom. 
If you want to take your bird to a bed, take him to another bedroom. Take him somewhere where he can't see his cage because if he knows what's in his surroundings, he's going to want to go back to the last place he's been where he feels comfortable. So remember that. Now in this demo, I'm going to take away the cage and we're going to pretend that the cage is in a completely different room and that I brought Cody to a different room and we're going to continue there with our taming, probably with Picasso. Now guys, I realize that Cody is probably a great demo bird for this video, even though I thought it might be good to bring Picasso because as you guys saw, Cody doesn't want to be here right now. He knows where his toys are and he has a completely different agenda. Now the first thing I brought is some treats. Cody, are you interested perhaps in any of these? You see that he stopped and he looked and he has a second opinion about where he really wants to go. Look, baby. I have some things here that you could try. Now, once you release your bird from the blanket, if you're able to kind of open him up, maybe with the help of someone and get him on your hand, that's great, but that's not always the easiest thing to do. You may only be able to take him to a spot and open him up and let him chill. I like to use places like the bed because it's a nice soft place. And there he's standing, especially with these smaller birds, they're just in a wide space and they don't exactly know what to do. So remember, wherever you unravel your bird, you want to make sure it's in a neutral spot. A neutral spot means that his cage is not nearby, his stand, some of his toys. Now Picasso's about to get very busy. It's really hard with these birds because they know my bedroom. So they know where they have their favorite spots and snacks and toys. So that's why Picasso just ran off right now. Once your bird is hanging out with you on the bed, he may go to a place that he feels more comfortable. This is a good time to try to pick him up. He's scared. He's probably not going to step up as easily as Picasso just did. But you want to make sure that he knows that you are the safest perch. A lot of the times they're afraid to be flat. It's okay. They're afraid to be flat. They don't like the way it feels on their foot. So they want to step up onto something like you first. This is the moment when you teach your bird the step up game. The step up game is very important. You do not want to return your bird to the cage without trying the step up game and getting him used to the idea of stepping from one finger to another. If you don't teach him this before he goes back into his cage, he's going to have a very hard time coming out of it again. So what you do, what's the matter, is you offer him your finger and he may push it away or he may even bite. You also have the option of wearing a glove, but this may scare your bird as well, and it may also get them not used to your hand. So it could be the last thing that you want to do. Now, sorry, right, baby, let's do the demo. Picasso has had a replacement. The first thing you want to do when you're teaching your bird the step up game, what I do is I keep my thumb up because I don't want him to do that, what he just did get above it because he might be able to climb on my shoulder, bite my face. You don't know the temperament of the bird and you want to be able to have some control of where he is. Now, what you do is you approach the bird with the other hand, not too high because then they will go for your finger. A lot of times people come over and they don't know anything about birds and they'll be like, step up. And I'll be like, well, of course, if you're doing that, he's going to want to bite because you're putting that in his mouth and you don't want to go too low where he has to step down. Basically what you want to do is put your other hand, he may push it away or he might may bite kind of like Cody's trying to do right now. Because Cody's like, I already know this game. Picasso is kind of the same way. You put it in a position where they have to step up. Now, what I do sometimes to make it a lot easier is I, when I know that this hand is stable and ready, I will make this hand a little bit unstable so that your bird feels much safer stepping up. Now, of course, you want to reward your bird with a treat for stepping up. Good bird. Now, you do not want to return your bird back to the cage until he's skilled in the step up game because then it's going to be hard to get him out again. You guys know Cody. You know how crazy he is. And you know that he wants to play with his toys. So he is very busy trying to get away from me, which is why he's kind of good for this demo. 
So right now, Cody's stepping up without even really knowing that he's learning something. That's what the treats are for. So you want to make a big deal out of it every time he steps up. Right now, he doesn't want to do it anymore. This is what you're going to get your bird behavior to be like. So you want to come at it strong until he has no choice. You want to also maybe drop the hand that he's on a little bit once you know that he's stable. This way, birds always want to go to the next stable space. Always, always, always. So he's keeping a step up. You want to give him rewards. And some birds, like Cody, you want to be like, good bird. Yes, you're a good bird. Yeah, he loves kisses. He loves love. And he loves attention. So remember, guys, don't return your bird back to his cage until you've done the step up game. Now, the other thing to remember is once you have him in a situation where he can maybe step up or you could hold him, you want to, from there, always have a spot that he can be next to you. So, let me see if I can show you guys this. Here's a stand. You know Cody has much bigger rolling stands downstairs, but this is just a little play stand I brought up. I keep it in my computer room. Cody is on it. Let me move that closer so you guys can see. Cody's on it right there. Um, the reason this is important is because if your bird is not taking to you so much or he's still skittish but you're able to hold him and you're kind of able to get him out, you don't want to put him back in the cage until he's completely content next to you, hours and hours a day. Put him on things like this, stands where he'd be next to you. You're on your phone, but he's next to you. So you're not completely spending hours engaging with him, but you are because he's engaged. He has toys, he's out, he's next to you. You go to the shower, you take him to the shower. If you can't, you carry the play stand and you move it from room to room. You have to let that bird know that your intentions are to be with him all of the time. I'm making this video because I wanted to stress how important it is to taming, to keep him next to you, to have many different ways to keep him next to you. You see the stand that he's standing on? This stand is actually on a chair. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, this is the chair. Yeah, you guys can see. So this is another thing. This chair is actually a spot that he sits on, let's say if he's in my bathroom. And my bathroom is kind of also the area where I have my vanity and my closet and so many other things. So I turn things into stands so that they have a place to be wherever I am. Some of you ladies know about like face cloth holders with the two circles. Picasso stands on that. Picasso stands on the faucet. Actually, Vinny's on one faucet, Picasso's on the other. The top of my shower will hold Jersey. The point is that the only way to tame your bird is to include him in almost everything that you do. And if you're telling me that your bird doesn't want to come out or when he comes out, he doesn't want to be next to you, that's okay. It's important that he is at least next to you. So if you can't engage with him 100%, but you can get him out and let him sit next to you, then that's okay too. Remember, he will continuously improve. The more he gets to hang out with you, the better he's going to be. The most specific thing I want to address here today is I get a lot of messages that says, my bird bites, what do I do? Or I do bring him out, but when I bring him out, he always bites. Biting is a whole different subject, but still, if he's biting you, you have to be close to him for him to bite you right. So it's good that you are engaging with him. But if you haven't made any progress, it's okay to lay low on the hand contact engaging with him, but it's not okay to never have him out of the cage. It's best to have him out, and if he's a biter and you don't go anywhere near him, meaning like hand-wise, but he is getting an opportunity to travel with you from room to room, he will gradually progress. You just got to say, oh, it's okay if I don't approach him here right now. It's okay if I don't have to kiss him, if he won't let me kiss him. That's all okay. Maybe he doesn't enjoy that, but it's not okay if you use those as excuses to not have him out next to you. Look, Cody's right there. I don't have to touch him in half an hour if I don't want to. I mean, of course I'm going to, but my point is just because he bites doesn't mean he has to be in a cage. He can be a biting aggressive bird on a stand next to you.
So that is my advice to you. That's what I want you guys to take home from this video today, the most important thing that I could tell you. And the most important thing that I've been trying to convey to you guys, and I think the best way to do it was through a demo, that here's Cody, he could have been the most aggressive bird in the world. Or take Rocky, you guys know sometimes Rocky is the most loving bird in the world. He was in a situation where he was in a cage for 10 years, so sometimes, especially now with breeding season, he's getting aggressive. Doesn't mean I don't give him everything that he wants during the day. Doesn't mean that I don't roll his stands with me wherever I go. You guys watched on my story time last night. He was sitting on his stand demanding me to whisper to him. That's his routine. You saw that he had to be in front of his big projector. Whether or not he's going through a phase where he wants to be aggressive or not, I still behave with him the same. He's included in everything. He gets to be with me. I'm not going to take it out on him if he's having emotional things. I'm just going to help him and lend a hand and let him know that he's always, always, always going to be included. Because this is why birds get put up for adoption. Because people don't understand why their birds are aggressive. And it's really important that we say to ourselves, Okay, it's okay, he's going through something right now. I'm not going to change. I'm just going to make his life a little bit easier. I'm not going to give him up. Because if you give him up to someone in that moment, then he's going to be extra hurt, extra emotional, extra aggressive. And then each person that the bird has after that is going to have a harder time taming the bird. And you want your bird to have a forever home. It's up to you. Remember that, guys. If you guys like this video, please comment. You can add other things to help people out with. Um, I did make a taming video before, so this is just going to aid in more specifically what to do when you bring your bird home. If you guys have heard me talk about my story time today on Instagram, you can follow me at Marlene McCohen. I'm putting my story all day long with the birds, just different things that they're doing, eating, hanging, playing toys and things like that. If you guys want me to see your birds, of course, Parrot Station um, on Facebook. We talk a lot on there about what you guys want to see next. And you guys are also, as a community, helping each other out. In the coming few weeks, I'm going to be adding a lot of different things there to help you guys out. Links to different products that I really enjoy and buy for my birds because I feel like I got to get those out to you guys soon. I see that a lot of you are wondering what cages and stuff to buy. So use Parrot Station as a great resource for that. I will have some documents coming up for you guys and of course videos to follow. If you guys are into the platform of birds being engaged and not caged, Please follow Engage Not Caged on Instagram. Hashtag a picture of your bird with Engage Not Caged and I will feature your bird. It takes me a while to get to all of them. Um, I pay attention as much as I can to which birds I haven't featured yet. If I feature your bird more than once, just because your picture just stands out so well, I do my best on there, guys. But basically, it's a platform. We want to let people know that our birds are engaged and not caged, and that's what we believe in. And of course, I should reiterate that um, it doesn't mean they don't have cages. It just means that we take action in spending all day long with our birds and letting them be out. And even if Cody hated me right now, that's okay because I find ways to let him be out of the cage. So that is it, guys. Please subscribe. Subscribers mean so much to me. Um, we're hitting another milestone, almost 20,000 viewers. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And um, join Parrot Station. And I love you guys. Give this video a thumbs up. Bye.